got uh, for the next 25 minutes till the end of the hour. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, best-selling author, former editor of the Wall Street Journal, former head of policy department of Treasury under Reagan, the father of Reaganomics, uh, who has laid out the fact uh, that we've offshored our economy, and so nothing is going to fix it. And until that's discussed, we have no hope. And talked about, of course, the debt ceiling being a discussion of rearranging deck chairs on the Titanic. Uh, and we're going to get into that with him and what's happened in the markets and get Bob Chapman's take and have Bob ask some questions or have these two gentlemen converse. I think it's interesting to have the two together. But first, uh, this, bin, uh, this, this Bin Laden development in New Yorker magazine. Very, very interesting. And, and then we'll dovetail that with Russian envoy. NATO is planning attacks on Syria and Iran next. We'll get uh, Dr. Paul Craig Roberts' take on that. Doc, good to have you here with us. Thanks, Alex. So let's get into your latest column. It's very interesting. <laughs> well, Alex, you uh, you know, the New Yorker published this story that was planted, I think, on the journalist <clears throat> uh, by sources who claim to uh, know about uh, the killing of bin Laden. And it's obviously a fairy tale. I think it had a purpose, which was to sort of explain uh, why the SEALs killed bin Laden instead of capturing him. And the explanation given was that uh, the U.S. government didn't want any detainees. <laughs> and, and then it, it was to give an explanation of why they dumped his body uh, in the ocean instead of producing the evidence. And uh, the answer was, well, that's the way the SEALs have, have uh, disposed of other victims. And it was just uh, what they did. Uh, but before they did it, they called up some uh, uh, Saudi uh, intelligent official somewhere and, and got his approval. So uh, obviously it's, uh, it, it's just some sort of uh, repeat uh, of the story that we were told uh, earlier after they finally uh, changed it a dozen times and <laughs> put it together. And the question that I raised was, why didn't the New Yorker send somebody to uh, interview the Pakistani who watched the whole thing from the roof of his house next door to the alleged compound of bin Laden and who was interviewed on um, Pakistani television. And I watched the interview, but I couldn't understand the language. But someone had put uh, an English translation running along the bottom of the video in, in, in a script. And what he was saying was that, uh, well, there were three helicopters, uh, one landed, uh, about a dozen people got out, went in the house. A few minutes later, they came back, got in the helicopter, and as it lifted off, it blew up, and they were all killed. And I saw the bodies all over the place and and pieces of bodies, and we went down, and the Pakistani military came and shoot us off. Well, the U.S. government acknowledges it lost a helicopter, but it claims nobody was injured somehow. <laughs> it crashed. By the way, to back you up, they have had major <laughs> uh, Arabic-speaking news outfits have translated that, and that is true. And other witnesses said there was a guy that lived there for years, and he looked like bin Laden, but it wasn't bin Laden. They've never produced the wives they say they grabbed. There wasn't the shootout, the human shield. Uh, there wasn't, uh, you know, the, the Islamic law burial at sea. It's all just, a, you know, the fake uh, situation room photos that we said were fake, now admitted to be fake. I mean, it's just absolutely asinine that this well, is going on. it all over again, and it's now in the New Yorker. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I wish somebody would translate to this uh, this broadcast of the interview with Bashir because it's freely available on YouTube. <clears throat> and there must be somebody who knows the language <clears throat> that can confirm what he's actually saying. Now, if he's saying what I read on the translation, in other words, the English translation I saw wasn't a hoax, then we have a totally different story <laughs> from what the government has told us. And you would think that the intelligence committees of Congress would be interested, uh, that somebody in the media would be interested, uh, even the New Yorker, because they well, publish from time to time Cy Hearst. I mean, he could go over there and interview the guy and find out what happened, and then we could have uh, maybe a bit of truth get out instead of all these fairy tales. Well, I think what I'm getting from this is you've had respect for New the, the New Yorker in the past, and they have broken a lot of big things. Cy Hirsch did break that Nick Cheney wanted to attack our own ships, what, five years ago, and uh, blame it on the Iranians with fake patrol boats. He exposed uh, 
Operation Phoenix and the torture in Vietnam. But let me tell you, this, this is for Obama, though, and we know they're big Democrats over there. So they, they seem to only break stuff on Republicans, very partisan outfits. So, Dr. Roberts, I would advise that you not hold your breath because, uh, you know, we need you. I, I don't I don't think you're going to get that out of them. No, I won't. I won't hold my breath. <laughs> somebody could very easily translate uh, the, the language interview and put it up so that we would have it. L let me briefly get Bob Chapman's take on this. And instead of um, Alex Jones asking a question about the economy, I'll have uh, Bob throw <laughs> one at you and you guys can go back and forth. Bob Chapman of the International Forecaster. Uh, Bob, you got any comments on the whole uh, Osama bin Laden uh, rabbit trick? Well, I think it's a rewrite, uh, just like uh, Mr. Roberts said, and uh, I think uh, they continue to try to redo the mistakes that they've made. They made a terrible mess, mess out of it, especially for someone who's been deceased for some time, and uh, they just made a mess of it again. Uh, as, as far as um, the economy is concerned, uh, I would like to get the take uh, of Mr. Roberts on uh, has QE3 started or when do you think it will? I have my ideas and what do you think? Well, you know, Bob, they, they might start at this time without telling us. But I don't well, see that's how they I think they already it. did. <laughs> <laughs> well, notice he said months ago he wouldn't do it, and now they say, well, we may have to, but there's yeah. every indicator they're still monetizing debt, aren't they? Well, um, I don't know. Um, it, you know, right now, <clears throat> what we do know is they used up uh, yesterday 60% uh, of their new uh, debt ceiling increase. <laughs> so I think uh, the problem that the government faces is it's got more crises than it's aware of. And it's thinking that it just has some sort of a deep recession, but it's they're thinking in the uh, normal terms of a post-war recession where workers are laid off from jobs that still exist and could be called back to work if the government can pump up demand enough can create enough new aggregate demand. They're, they're still thinking in that model. You see it, for example, in Paul Krugman, who says that we could recover if the government would just run a bigger deficit. And then they have a, another problem on top of that that they do uh, recognize, and that is that they've got an ongoing financial crisis. No one really knows uh, the true state of the banks. and and um, whether they're solvent or, or not. And, but what they don't understand is they have let offshoring uh, destroy the economy, and there are no jobs to call people back to work to. Well, isn't this the banksters uh, thinking that their fiat paper derivative economy is a real economy? I mean, at the end of the day, you can't eat that paper, and you just mentioned yeah. it. Here's French News Agency two days ago. Explain this to me. U.S. borrowing tops 100% of GDP uh, the day they lifted it. U.S. debt shot up $238 billion to reach 100% of gross domestic product of the government's debt ceiling was lifted. Treasury figures showed Wednesday. Treasury borrowing jumped Tuesday. The data showed immediately after President Obama signed into law increases in the debt ceiling. So as you just said, uh, this isn't saying they gobbled up most of it. It says they gobbled it all up immediately. Well, <clears throat> I think what the French is saying is that the, the debt uh, raised uh, increased enough that it's now equal to the to the uh, gross domestic product, and of course the the gross domestic product um, may be falling and it may be overstated because they've been understating inflation. And if you understate the inflation, it looks like you've got more than you've got. Uh, I think, uh, uh, <clears throat> Alex, that during World War II, the uh, debt was actually a larger share of the gross domestic product than right now. Um, but there is a big difference in that uh, we now have, the during World War II, we didn't have an offshored economy. <laughs> the economy was still here. And, and so going have, into debt in the four years was building the real physical economy. So at the yeah. end of it, we were the kings of the earth. 
So, so now we, we have the economy, it's in Japan and India and Indonesia and where and wherever. So um, you can't revive that economy by printing money and running deficits. And I don't think the policymakers or the economics profession have, have caught on to that. And the dilemma they have, and I think Bob will agree with this, is that uh, they're, they're trying to uh, ha have quantitative easing and flood the system with money. It's not causing inflation, uh, as you would expect, because it's staying in the banks. When it, when it, when it gets back to the banking system, it halts. They're not using the reserves to create a lot of new loans. And so we're not having um, as high a rate of money creation in the overall economy as the Fed is creating. And, and so we're not having inflation in that way. But all this outpouring worries the rest of the world about the dollar because they hold all their central bank reserves in, in dollars. And they see all this. And so the dollar is taking the hit. And the, the inflation we get comes in from the fall in the exchange value of the dollar. I looked today and it looked like the Swiss franc had made another new high against the dollar. We're, the mighty dollar is now worth 76 Swiss cents. So, <laughs> so the inflation we get is coming in from the dollar's loss of exchange value. And so now they're faced with, you can't, support the dollar and save the dollar and also uh, bail out the banks, uh, monetize the Treasury's debt. So wh which are they going to choose? They're going to so, have one crisis, and, mm -hmm. then, and then when that crisis becomes clear, they'll try to do the opposite, and then the other crisis will come. So it's like a balancing act in a cartoon where you've got 100 different plates and pots in your hand. It's only a matter of time till it falls. Uh, Bob Chapman, your take on what he's saying. No, I agree with all of it. I think uh, it can't be understated. The uh, free uh, free trade globalization offshoring outsourcing has cost us 11.7 million jobs in almost 11 years. Uh, 440,000 uh, 400 uh, companies have moved out of the country. And without uh, those kinds of manufacturing, uh, we can never, ever recover. And so uh, how do you change that? Uh, we need legislation uh, which would put tariffs on goods and services so that we can play in a level, a level playing field. And uh, you'll see every day uh, Japan's in the, in the market. Uh, because their uh, currency is too strong, so they're trying to make it weak. The Swiss just did the same thing. Uh, they've been both unsuccessful for those who want stronger currencies. Uh, I think eventually a lot of that money is going to go into gold, maybe silver as well. And so what we have is a, an economy that even if it wanted to, couldn't recover. And at the same time, as Mr. Roberts said, they, the banks, are holding goo gobs of money, um, $2 trillion onshore. Uh, actually, it's a little higher than that. And they're not using it. Well, that was my next and question. What's this statement today that big banks in the U.S. are going to start charging people, including big institutions, charging them to hold their, their cash? I thought that was only the case in money laundering, Dr. Roberts. <laughs> I don't know why they're doing it. You know, Switzerland did that back in the 80s when gold was up and the dollar was having trouble because so many, so much uh, foreign money was pouring into Switzerland at the time. It was driving the franc too high. So in the way you put money in Switzerland then was you opened a bank account. <clears throat> and so they would charge you if you put your dollars there. I don't know what the banks here are doing it for. Maybe they're just desperate for fees and money, and maybe they realize that, that uh, people with uh, big holdings uh, don't trust the stock market and realize that the bond market might be the next to tumble, and so they're yeah. stuck in yeah. cash, and so they're going <laughs> to... Let me throw this out real quick, because we're going to break, and we're going to come back and see where this is going with Dr. Roberts, and then we'll continue on with... Uh, with Bob Chapman, why do you think the Italian government has rated Moody's and S and P, uh, the rating agencies uh, in Italy? I don't know about that. Ask Bob. <laughs> Either, but I can tell you that uh, they would be trying to coerce them. Uh, 
Just back to the charging of interest uh, on large deposit, they want to drive that money into the treasury market. That's my take on it. Yeah. So they want to force folks out of just sitting in bank accounts and to prop up treasury so the Fed doesn't have to monetize it because they claim they're going to cut back on that. Okay, I want to see where Dr. Roberts thinks this is economy is going. And then we'll get a final comment in the hour from Bob Chapman. Then Bob will stay with us 30 more minutes. And we'll be right back on the other side. China debt ceiling lift, unlikely to save U.S. economy, eating maize grain in April, being lectured by the Chinese. I mean, what have we let these foreign bankers do to us? Italy to take up balanced budget amendment, stock market shooting up and down. Now it's plunging again. Uh, we'll be covering come up in the next 30 minutes. Um, it, 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 it's just so crazy. Two-year Treasury yield drops. Dr. Roberts, I remember three years ago, you said, well, if we don't turn this around, we'll basically be at where we've now come to in three years. So where, if this continues, and clearly they're not changing the policies. You know, we always talk about solutions. They don't care. They like what's happening. It, it's consolidating power. You know, you're saying, well, they just must be idiots. But at the end of the day, I mean, they're not complete morons, so they're all making record bonuses in these big mega banks. So where is this going? Where does this course we're on right now with this mad captain take us? Uh, to the third world. Uh, we're, we'll be a third world country in another 12, 15 years. Uh, and that's, that's where we're going. That's what I predicted at the beginning of this uh, new century. And... Uh, there's no um, no departure from that course. It's uh, going to be a third world economy, and um, there are a lot of uh, villains in, in the, who will be responsible. And as you say, um, they seem to be happy with it, but <clears throat> I still maintain they don't understand what's what's going on, or they don't understand enough of what's going <clears throat> what's going on. Well, a lot of them talk about a post-industrial world and how great, you know, the, the, the recession's been to cut carbon footprint. And I go to Whole Foods and half the magazines for the sandaled trendies is about how great it is to be poor and how America needs to fall apart. Uh, I mean, I, I think you underestimate just how wicked these people are. Yeah, but they don't benefit from destroying a, a powerful economy where they have huge stakes. So, uh <clears throat> That's why I... No, I understand. If they have America captured, why would they want to destroy it? Because the globalists hate us that much. I mean, they can't help it. They'd rather... Well, I think, Alex, this is self-inflicted. Uh, this is, this is self-inflicted. Uh, it, it was Wall Street and the big retailers that uh, drove the American industry offshore and... Uh, and hired all the uh, name economists to call it globalism and say that we were benefiting and to pretend it's free trade. And uh, so it's domestically. Uh, and, and it was uh, Bush and Cheney who uh, launched us on these interminable wars. You know, we've been at war now for t 10 years. They've wasted more on these wars than th they hope to recover from the debt limit deal. You mean they've launched kinetic actions of peace, sir? <laughs> yeah, right. And uh, so what, they're, they're caught between an unfunded military budget, uh, a deteriorating tax base. You know, every time a job is offshored, the income, the tax base, the GDP goes with it. And uh, as Bob says, the, the main problem is to keep financing a massive deficit that's not going away. In fact, as I said the other day, uh, the deficit projections will have to be reissued before long. And because the economy is uh, falling down again, they're yeah. going to be larger. They're going to be bigger deficits. And so they've got to finance these deficits. And so how are they going to do it? There's not enough world savings to do it. The Chinese and Japanese. So bottom line, we're falling apart. Dr. Paul Craig Roberts, author of War of the Worlds, How the Economy Was Lost. Thank you. See you back this Sunday, 4 to 6 p.m. We're going into overdrive. You know, Roberts is a smart guy, great guy. But, I mean, I've read the U.N. documents. I've seen their statements about destroying economies to consolidate them. They don't want free market economies anymore. They don't want people having a future stake in things. And they're going to bring down the third world, China, Russia, Europe, everybody.
They've set up a system where we're dependent on resources, an industrialized modern state. They cut them off. Just like De Beers has a monopoly on diamonds that are semi-precious but are ultra-precious because of their monopoly. Same thing with oil. They push the idea that it's super scarce when we're drowning in it. And they have every foppish, fake intellectual telling you we're out of oil. Uh, this is a planned program, post-industrial society, just like California putting 20% carbon taxes when they're falling into the you know ocean and got a 30-plus percent uh, unemployment rate. This is their goal. This is their goal. This is economic conquest, scorched earth. Bob Chapman, do you disagree with that statement? I agree completely. And the final analysis is this fascist model that they put into being, which we always thought would probably be uh, an extension of communism, is set up to bring the world to their knees, particularly Western Europe and uh, the United States and Great Britain, so that people will be forced to accept this new world order, this one world government. Absolutely. And, and they're setting up Und homeland, they claim is for the Muslims. Notice they flip it now onto the people that don't like the foreign bankers. Oh, you don't like the occupation of finance capital uh, who are non-free market? Oh, well, you're a terrorist. And you can see the writing on the wall. They're going to blow stuff up and blame it on us, Bob. I mean, they had a, That's me right. they had a media Absolutely. matter. Absolutely. Go ahead. No, you go ahead. I'm just agreeing with adjectives. You're right. <laughs> no, it's just it's disgusting. Media matters took me out of context yesterday. And by the end of the article, it implies I'm calling for murdering police when it's the opposite. I mean, they're really getting ready to try to set us up because we're kicking their hind in, Bob. That's right. And we're going to continue to do it. And we're not going to get sucked into their vortex of evil. They're not going to be able to get away with it because too many people out there know what they're up to. It's just like all of the information that you came up with that you believe was going to happen about Whitey the terrorist. And there he was. He appeared in Oslo, and that was what you were talking about, and you predicted that they would do something like that, and they did. But if there's any doubt now this week, with the vice president and all of them saying, and the New York Times and Politico hundreds, yes, Whitey is the terrorist. The Tea Party are going to bomb us. I mean, folks, how obvious. They're saying we're going to bomb them, and then they got White House memos about how a bombing will help them. Uh, police... Who should you be looking at if you were living in the real world? I mean, Bob, you worked in intelligence. Who would you look at? You got groups saying, boy, a terror attack would sure help us. They start saying this group's going to bomb. I mean, right there, you got them. They're getting ready to do it. That's right. And, you know, they, they really make so many mistakes. And they have to scramble to cover it up like in this Oslo affair and, and all the others that they've made. And uh, because they control the media in almost totality, at least the main, mainstream, they can get away with it. Uh, they keep on telling the same lie over and over again, and, and, and sometimes in variations as we saw today. And, uh, and what did uh, uh, the, the Joseph Goebbels say? The same thing. You keep on telling him the same lie, and they're going to believe it. The good news is 69% in a Rasmussen poll believe the scientists are lying about global warming. And now they're having to admit, okay, there was less ice 5,000 years ago. Okay, the sun does heat the earth. I mean, more and more, their ridiculous lies are coming home to bite them in their uh, man, bear, pig hind ends. Well, they sure are. And uh, they're rightly so. And they expect all of us to be dumb. And you know something? There's a lot of smart people in the world besides them. And they outnumber the people who are trying to do us in. And sooner or later, we're going to win. We are. Stay there. Bob Chapman, stay there.